Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at calculating the MIRR, or the Modified Internal Rate of Return, using the TI-84 calculator. Now, I had actually previously done a video on this, but then I got a comment from somebody who had a problem where the signs in the future cash flows changed. And what I mean by that is, say, year one was a positive, as it is here, and then year two was a negative. The signs changed, right? Because there was a, an additional reinvestment there. And this is actually sort of one of the areas where the MIRR is preferred. The method that I showed gave the wrong answer. So I've gone ahead and I've taken that video down, and now I'm going to show you a method that works no matter what. Whether the signs are all the same or they change, whether they're all positive or they're negative, it doesn't make a difference. There will be a few more steps involved here, but it's still pretty easy. So let's get started. Now I'm going to use the TI-84 plus silver edition. That doesn't really matter. As long as it's a TI-84, it's going to work. Um, and I believe it also works with the TI-83. First thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get a couple of inputs. Okay, and those are going to be the present value of the positives, the present value of the negatives, and the future value of the positives. You can get these in pretty much any order you want, except that you will need the present value of the positives in order to get the future value of the positives. So I'm going to go ahead and take these in this order. Now for year one, we have an initial cash outflow of $800. That's our initial investment. Year one, we get a cash flow of $5,000, and then year two, we make a reinvestment of $5,000. Our investment rate is going to be 10%, and our reinvestment rate is going to continue to be 10%, although later in the video, I'll show you uh, how to adjust for if the reinvestment rate is different. Okay, so the present value of the positives. Let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to turn on our calculator. I'm going to hit apps. I'm going to go into our finance calculators. And then down here at the very bottom, number 7, NPV, net present value. I'm going to hit 7 for that. I could arrow down if I wanted to, but this is faster. Now the very first input that you want to put in here is going to be the interest rate. So which interest rate? Okay. Positives are going to be the reinvestment rate. Okay, not the initial in investment rate. And that's because we're getting the future value of the positives eventually. In the future, we're reinvesting what we initially invested in the present. Okay, so the present value of the negatives will be the initial investment rate. In this case, they're the same, so we're just going to say 10, comma. Okay, so we hit our comma button and get that there. And then for year zero, which is what would normally go next, we're actually going to ignore that. And everything that we ignore is a zero. So we're going to hit zero there. And then a comma. And I'm going to hit my second key here to open up a curly braces. And no matter how many inputs you're going to put in here, even if it was just one year, you need the curly braces. Otherwise, it will fail. Okay, the calculator just can't handle it without the curly braces. Now we're going to take our year one, we're going to go to year one. Our first number here is a positive, so we're going to put that in there. 5,000, comma. Then we're going to hop over to year two. Now year two is a negative, and we ignore negatives, and everything that we ignore is a zero. Since it's the last number, you don't actually have to put this in, but let's go ahead and put it in anyway. So we put in our zero, we're going to close our curly braces, we're going to do our parentheses, and enter. And what we get is 4545.45. Okay? So let's write that down. 4545.45. Okay. Now for the negatives. And the reason I'm doing it in this order is because for the future value, you're going to have to go into the time value of money calculator. 
and you're going to need to be in that for the MIRR anyway, so might as well do it all at once, right? So let's go back to our apps and go to our finance calculator. I just hit enter to get into it. And once again, I'm going to hit 7 for our net present value to calculate the present value of the negatives. Again, the investment rate is the same as the reinvestment rate, so that's still going to be 10. I hit my comma. We're still ignoring year zero. We always ignore year zero, so that's going to be zero. Comma. Curly braces. And then we move to our next year. Well, that's a positive. Since we're doing negatives, we're going to ignore the positive. And everything we ignore, as I said, is a zero. Comma. And then year two. Well, that's a negative, so we're going to put that in. And we're going to use this negative button down here at the bottom, not to be confused with the minus or the subtract button over here. So a negative 5,000. Okay, because if you use that subtract button, that's going to give you the wrong answer. We're going to close our curly braces and close our parentheses. And now we're going to end up with this negative 4132.23. So let's write that down. Negative 4132.23. Now, if you're thinking, well, that's not all the negatives, because year zero is a negative. You are correct. So we have to subtract 800 from this. Seems like an unnecessary extra step, but trust me, the calculator just can't handle it otherwise. So, negative 4132.23 minus 800 is actually negative 49,032.23. Now you could use the calculator to figure that out, but um, in this case it's just, you know, 8 plus 1 is 9, and there you go. All the rest of the numbers are the same. Now for the fun part. We're going to go into our apps, into our finance calculators once again. Okay, and in this case we're going to go into our time value of money solver, our TVM solver. We're already highlighted on it. We could press 1, but we're just going to press Enter in this case. N is going to be the number of years. We ignore 0. 1, 2. So 2 years. Our interest rate here is going to be 10. Okay. And that is actually going to be, because what we're solving here for is the future value of the positives. And since we're doing the future value, that's going to be the reinvestment rate, okay? So that's 10% for the, for the reinvestment rate there. The present value is going to be 4545.45. No payments, so we skip that. And then we go to our future value. We hit our green alpha button here and hit enter. And what we end up with is negative 5499.99. So let's write that down. Okay. Negative 5499.99. Now, both of these that we have written down are negatives. But for the calculator, we have to change one of them to a positive, and it does not matter which one. Okay? So we're going to just go ahead and leave that as a negative because it's already there, and we'll take our present value of the negatives and plug that in as a positive, even though we have it written down as a negative. So that's going to be 49, 32, 23. And we're going to go up to our interest rate, hit alpha, and solve. And that is our MIRR, 5.59 or 5.6.
5.6%. Okay? It's that simple. Okay. So what happens if all of them are a positive? Well, I'm going to show you that just so that you know how to deal with it. And to throw us for an extra loop, I'm going to change the reinvestment rate okay, to a 12. Let's just say, for fun, this is going to be 12%. And I'm going to also change our year zero, our year one, our year two, and I'm going to add a year three. Now, why am I doing this? Um, honestly, it's not to make it more complicated. It's just this is the problem that I had originally, and I already know the answer to it. So I'm going to do that. Okay, year one is going to be 5,400. Or excuse me, 54,000. Okay. That's year zero, 54,000. Year one, 21,000. Year two is going to be 14,000. And year three is going to be 23,400. Okay. Let's erase our inputs, because they're all going to change. And our MIRR. All right, so they're all positive now. How are we gonna do this? Well, let's go ahead and quit out to here. Let's clear all of this. And let's start with our positives, okay? So apps, finance calculators, NPV, and since we are working on the positives, we're working toward a future value. So that means we're going to work on the reinvestment rate because once again, we reinvest in the future, right? We're not there yet. So that in this case is going to be 12 comma. As always, we are ignoring year zero. So that's gonna be a zero comma. Do our second and our curly brace here. And then we're just going to bounce from one year to the next. That's positive. So that's 2100 for year or 21,000 for year one. Bouncing to year two, we have 14,000. Comma. And then bouncing over here to year three, we have 23,400 end our curly braces, and end our parentheses, and we end up with 46, 566, 37. So let's write that down. 46, 566, 37. Okay, let's do our negatives. You're gonna love this one. Apps. Finance, seven. Our investment rate is 10. We ignore year zero. Open up our curly braces. And we go to our first one. Well, that's positive, so we're going to ignore it, and everything we ignore is a zero, comma. Our second year is a positive. We ignore it, so it's zero. Our third one, we ignore it, because it's a positive. So it's zero. End our curly braces, end our parentheses, and yeah, that's zero. So if there are no negatives, you can basically just say it's zero. Okay? And that's going to be zero minus our final negative, which is 5,400. Excuse me, 54,000. I'm always making that mistake. All right. And that, of course, equals negative 54,000. Right now, I'm just writing this out because I like to torture myself. Okay, let's get those future values, shall we? The future values of the positives. 
is we're going to hit our apps button. We're going to go to our finance calculator, open up our TVM solver. This time, three years. So N equals three. Our reinvestment rate, because we're doing the positives, the future value of the positive, reinvesting in the future, is going to be 12. Our present value is going to be 46, 566, 37. And we're going to solve for our future value. So alpha, solve. And that gives us negative 65, 422, 39, Point 0.7, so that actually turns out to be 0.40. So let's write that down. So we have 65, 422, point, oh, I was even thinking 40, and I still wrote down the 3, 0.40. And then from there, we're going to move up to our present value. We're going to plug in 54,000. Hey, I got it right that time, 54,000. All right. And then we're going to move up to our interest rate, hit alpha, and solve. And that comes out to be 6.6%. Which means our MIRR is 6.6%. And that's it. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Go ahead and hit subscribe. If you have any questions or requests, go ahead and throw those in the comments. If you see anything that I've done wrong, send me a correction. Also in the comments, let me know what I can fix. And I will see you guys next time. I hope this helps.